comes as a result of desire. My angels told me once that love is God's heart, wisdom is his mind, and peace is his body. And what you need to understand is that desire is not bad, but you will never become enlightened unless you master your desires. You must not let desires take you into the future or into the back in the past, reminiscing about problems or mistakes. You must have power, you must take charge of your desires. Otherwise, you'll be a slave to your desires. So, you must be aware that the more you're in the present moment, the less desires arise until you're fully rooted in the present moment. And if a desire does arise, you're aware of it. And you don't have to ride the current. You can let it go. You can put your attention back to the tree or the bird, right? So you have choices, many, many choices. Here's a story. A Buddhist monk once went to his master and said, I have an email, can I open it? And the master said, as long as there's no attachments. Right? Now, here's another story. Everybody, go, a lot of people go to church, and that's fine if that makes you happy. The only God I ever found in church was the one that I brought in there myself, the one that was in my heart. There's only one thing in the world that will never lie to you, and that is your heart. So I want you to understand this, that your spirit, which is God, which is, our spirits are all one. We're all, it's just, it's just our, each spirit is part of a family of consciousness. And your spirit is talking to you with emotions. Every time you think a good thought, you're getting a good emotion because your spirit is saying, this is true, and if you keep thinking it, you're going to experience it. He's giving you a thumbs up. He's telling you what to think. You're getting guidance 24 hours a day all the time. So be aware, not of your thoughts necessarily, because that will take you away from the present moment, but when a bad feeling comes up, be aware of what triggered it. Change the channel. Pick a better thought. Right? You don't have to. Just because a bad feeling comes up doesn't mean you have to hold on to it. Our consciousness is like a spiritual hand. When a thought arises, we can grasp it, which causes suffering, or we can just let it go. Let the thought go. When you become enlightened, you realize that all things pass. Every time you say this to yourself, you, you gain a sense of peace that washes over you. Every thought that arises will pass. Every occurrence passes. Nothing stays the same. So you must understand that there's nothing to control. Control is the ego. Control is illusion. The minute you think you have control is the minute you lose control. You take charge. Charge means I can change direction in any time I want. I'm the chooser. My thoughts are not in charge. My ego's not in charge. My mind's not in charge. Life's not in charge. Life is a projection of what I think into it. It's a projection of the feelings and the thoughts that I project out into it, right? That's what life is. Now, I talk to many beings. I talk to Buddha. I talk to Christ. I talk to many masters that you've probably even never even heard of. And enlightenment should be a desire that everybody attains in this life. See, every time you feel good, you benefit all people in this world because you send a ripple out and the people who are, are benefited from it. Imagine if you were in a state of peace 24 hours a day. You'd be sending currents of peace out to all the world. If one person becomes enlightened and they teach two people to become enlightened, and each one of those persons teach another two people to become enlightened, that's exponential growth. That's how the world changes. The masters and the people we revere and adore became enlightened. That's all they did. They became who they really are. How hard can it be to be who you really are? You just have to be yourself. Now, we live in a world of impatience. The ego is impatient because its time on this earth is limited. But spirit is patient because he, this time is eternity. He doesn't die. He's very patient. If the flowers were impatient, they would never grow, right? So patience is very important. It's probably one of the last obstacles you, you'll have to overcome before you get to enlightenment. Now, if you want to become enlightened, the first thing you need to do is to put out a desire for it. Now, you may not know what that state's like, but if you, if you put out desires to your spirit, to the universe, say, I want to be enlightened, and you can be enlightened because you have unlimited power. See, we are unlimited beings, but we use our power to limit us. We are birds in paradise 
living in the cage because of our thoughts. We limit ourselves. We are like fish in the fishbowl. We're not aware of the ocean. We live in a small little bowl and we think, and we wonder why we're so unhappy, why we don't feel connected to the Creator. If you're not enlightened, here's the problem. You think very little of God, because God is the enlightened being. And the more you think of God, the more you pick up His frequency, the more you blend with Him, the more you raise your consciousness, the more you understand what He understands, and the more you act like God. The more you, the closer you get to God, the more you start acting like God. Now, there's many paths to enlightenment, many, many paths. But I would say that the monopoly goes to the Buddha. He has a systematic way of becoming enlightened. Study his path, get all the books you can on the Buddha. Meditation is a prerequisite if you want to become enlightened. You must learn to still your mind, to quiet your mind, to enter into states of enlightenment, of peace and relaxation. That's where it all begins. Now, if you meditate today, the benefits of that meditation will continue to be reaped for 30 days, maybe even longer. Every time you meditate, you're, you're changing your body, you're relaxing, you're changing your biochemistry, you're purifying your mind a little bit at a time. Now, life is a river I was told by my angels. It can become a clear river, a stormy river, a muddy river, a raging river, a calm river, or a river you drown in. It all depends on whether you go with the flow or whether you decide to swim upstream, which is the challenge that everybody has. People are trying to swim up at the stream, which is very exhausting. Let, you need to let go and let the river currents take you to where, to a better place. That's what you have to do. Let the river that's flowing through your body and flowing out of you flow. So, here's a story about Jesus. There was a black janitor once. He wanted to go to a white church. He had a desire. So he talked to the priest and the priest said, No, you can't come. Everybody will leave if you come. So that night, he prayed to Jesus. And he said, Jesus, I really want to go to this church. I really want to go to this church. So Jesus, Jesus appeared. And he said, You're my friend. Don't be upset because they won't let you in the church. I've been trying to get into that church for 2,000 years and they still haven't let me in. A little bit of humor. Now, another way that you can become enlightened is chanting. If you think about the word compassion or freedom or wisdom, they all have the OM word in there. OM is home. OM is the key that opens up all the energy centers. OM purifies your mind. OM relaxes you. OM makes you a positive person. It connects you, it connects you with the universe. So OM is a place, it's something that you should chant on a regular basis. Get CDs that have OM chants in the back and, and let them run through your mind throughout your day. If you want to be, instead of thinking thoughts that limit you or fearful, let the OM chant be in there. Um, when you go to bed at night, you should let the OM chant resonate within your mind. It benefits you even if you're not saying it verbally. Just thinking about it, you're giving energy to it. So this is another way that you can purify your mind. Uh, so keep this in mind. This is a very powerful thing to do. Now, you need to, if you want to become enlightened, the, the best bet and the most important thing you can do is to find a teacher, somebody who already is there, somebody who understands how to get there, um, somebody who knows the way. Otherwise, it may take you many, many, many years to get there. Now, we are very powerful beings. The energy that created the universe and the world is flowing through us at all times. I was told by my angels that we have the power, if we wanted to, to set forth thoughts to walk on water and it would happen. We have the power to change the color of the moon. We have the power to fly through the sky like Superman. Now, most people don't believe this because they're not aware of this. We have great, great power. We can set fire to the rain. We can do all kinds of miraculous things. Sai Baba was able to pull statues out of the sand, made of gold, pull jewelry out of his hands. So look up Sai Baba, very powerful master. He said, the only difference between me and you is I know who I am and you don't. That's why I'm doing this. Now, when you become enlightened, 
what should be developed. The pathway to enlightenment is one where you develop kindness and compassion. You start being kind to yourself and therefore you start being kind to others. Um, life is a very beautiful place. As long as you ignore the troubles and difficulties that the newspapers and the radios and the television uh, news give you. You must let go of this stuff because otherwise you'll keep feeding the lies. Now, if you want to know what the truth is, you must starve the lie. You must start thinking thoughts that resonate with you. Reading books from masters. When you read a book from a master, you start to feel good because you're picking up the truth that they experienced and, and learned and taught in their lifetimes. When you start thinking that love is all there is, you start to feel good because love is the truth. When you start saying, I'm an eternal being, you start feeling good because that's the truth. When you start seeing, saying that I'm one with God, you start feeling good because that's the truth. The truth is what makes you feel good. The lies are what make you feel bad. The ego is a lie. Your spirit is the truth. God is the truth. So, we need to start concentrating on God more. People think very little of God. We visit coffee shops every day. We visit friends. We visit our jobs. But we pay very little visits to God. Right? How are we supposed to be happy if we're not thinking about the source of happiness? Right? A lot of people want things in life instead of wanting the source of the things, which is God, right? If you marry God, nobody will ever divorce you, and you'll be a very happy person. Keep this in mind. Now, if you want knowledge, read books. If you want wisdom, study life. We have to let life teach us what we are. Life can awaken us to our inner beauty if we're aware of life's beauty. The beautiful trees, the bird songs, the, the, the lakes, the oceans, the sky. Life is a very beautiful place. It's your greatest teacher. And you have to learn to sit down, be patient, and listen to it. Now, if you go out to nature and listen to a brook or a river, you start to gain a sense of peace. Your mind settles down. There's no distractions. The people who are not happy and not at peace are the people who are in the mall. The malls are always filled of people who are trying to gain, gain uh, temporary satisfaction or simple pleasures. You'll, get, you'll gain a lot more peace being out in nature and surrounding yourself with, these, with uh, the energy of, of, of the earth. Now if you think trees can't talk to you, I can tell you, they, let me tell you, they can talk to you. I talk to many trees. I talk to flowers, I talk to grass, I talk to a river. And a tree once told me, hey, just because I look like I'm standing still doesn't mean I'm not dancing inside. So everything is alive. If you, when you look at a mountain, you think, oh, the mountain is still. I can assure you that mountain walks all over the earth all the time. Nothing is still, everything changes. Now, the most beautiful thing in the world is the person who's aware of the most beautiful thing in the world. See, you won't find a better miracle in life or create a better, better miracle in life than the miracle that you already are. You are a divine being. Look how beautiful your body is. Look how you're able to move your fingers instantaneously. You're able to see. You're able to touch, taste, smell. Right? Now, a lot of masters say we must deny the pleasures of the world. When you're enlightened, the truth is you gain more pleasure because you're detached from them. You don't see them as your source of happiness. You see yourself as your source of happiness, and therefore you realize that happiness will never leave you. That is powerful, understanding that you are the source of joy and happiness and love and peace. Now, there's nothing you can't be, do, or have in this lifetime. You are here to get what you desire. But material things are not the answer. Material things don't bring you peace. Sometimes they disrupt your peace and take you away from peace. When you win a lottery, you may be worried that everybody's going to come and want your money. What if you lose it like all these people talk about? Lottery winners go broke a couple years after. You start to worry and worry. It adds worry. But money will only make you more of who you are. A lot of people want money in life. But what people don't realize is that they go to work at jobs that they don't like, that make them unhappy, 
to try and make money 